for people who do want to know, yes, it was tense between me and Cole. Mm-hmm. Was there any disrespect? No. Mm-hmm. Why are we here today? We eliminated the disrespect. Do we have feelings about it? Sure. Mm-hmm. Did we have feelings about it? Strong feelings. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Was there disrespect hurled across with the intentions to hurt somebody? No. All right, you good? Feel good? I'm good. I feel great. <laughs> awesome. What's going on? My name is Cole Connor. Welcome back to the Cole Connor Podcast. Today, I have a very special guest. Mm. The one, the only, the godfather of South mm. Carolina mm. hip-hop. Mm. Mm. Fat Rat does I all. I love it. I love it. Man, that's a good intro. Man. <laughs> might have to get you to record that. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, use that. I might just walk around with that. Yeah, before all day. I, before I walk in the room. <laughs> Every room you walk into. Play that real quick. All How right. you feeling today, man? Man, I'm feeling good, man. I got, uh, it's a beautiful day outside, first of all. It is, it is. So, took that in. And um, it's, a, it's a good day in general. It's a beautiful time. Yeah. Know, this is, it's, we are in a time, but uh, there's some beauty in it nonetheless. So, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I, um, I've recently... I'm just gonna kind of jump into some things because I, okay. I don't. I know this conversation for people who know us already. It, there's no. There's a million ways it could go. It could go right. Yeah, and it. I mean, it could. It could last forever. Right. I mean, we have so much. We so many. To talk about. There's a lot to talk about. But one thing that I, it's this. This time for me has been a super. Um, it's, it's just everything is just like full circle, and 2020 has been like this. This year, um, for everyone that's this, yeah, yeah, this pandemic it's just it's been hard. But um, in a, more ways than one, it's been like a full circle, and we've had sort of a, a reconnection of sorts. Yes, um, yes. definitely. And well, twenty twenty. Let me just say this. Really yeah, quick. yeah. Uh, I remember at the end of nineteen, people were saying this was going to be a year of vision, mm. um, and, and and like DMX eloquently said over the years, you know, you beg for it and I eat it, you know. This mm. is definitely eye opening. Mm. Do you hear that? A little yeah, yeah, feedback? Yeah. What is that? Uh, Was he that's actually recorded? I don't know. Did it go know. away? Yeah it is. I just wonder yeah. if it maybe it's I'm in the something. building. I I've known yeah. to <laughs> to do things to equipment, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But now nah, people asked for vision, people proclaimed it. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? You all you, you saw it all on social media. A lot of people like, this is the year, I'm gonna see everything clear. Mm-hmm. I don't think they knew the way they was gonna see it clear because mm. um, it came in a form, it actually was a year that provided a lot of vision uh, and cleared a lot of vision, a lot of clarity. Mm. So, um, like you know, carry on, but you know, it's not necessarily negative. That's and true. the truth is we asked for it, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. There was an overwhelming sense that the year 2020 for all the number freaks was gonna be, you know, that's clear vision. Mm-hmm. And- um, That's a good point. And I, I thought it would come a little more pampered than that. I thought, it, <laughs> yeah. I thought the delivery, I was, I was looking come for on. a stork delivery, right? Yeah, I thought yeah. the stork was gonna drop off a little clear and then mm-hmm. I would open it up and go, ah, nice. Mm-hmm. But no, it, it was it was an old fashioned desert grind, you know? You get out there in the desert and you'll find out. Yeah, I think you have a very solid point there. It, it may seem like dirty and messy and all these things, but it is in fact clearing, clearing the way and clearing the vision in a lot of ways. I know it's been it's been super reflective for me, um, especially in just like reconnecting and having more conversations with you. It makes mm-hmm. me think back to when we first met mm-hmm. and how that um, I me coming into the studio, mm-hmm. um, into the the boom room, and just good time. Man, it just like from your perspective, how how was that? Just us in the in the beginning, in the beginning of time, cold and fat. Um, it's crazy. I think I prayed for it. Mm. I think I prayed for something to extend my career. Mm. You know, um, I had done essentially what I wanted to do with the Cold War series. Um, it was hyper focused on South Carolina, and uh, you know several things I wanted to accomplish and I did that and so much more with the with the 
with the tape series itself. Mm-hmm. But um, I actually made a promise at that time mm. to a young lady I was dating, and um, Cold War Three was kind of rough on us mm. um, because I at those, at those times in my life I got so deep into my own head that I couldn't really uh, get too deep with anything or anybody else, Mm -hmm. you know, those records were so personal, right? Mm -hmm. And so at some point uh, I came home one night and she was like, ah, you know, like you ain't been here, you, and when you're here, you're not here, and mm-hmm. it was a, uh, you know. That's such a struggle, <laughs> but, but it was a real, it wasn't like a, um, you know, she was like no problem type of girlfriend. Yeah. Never, never gave me any issues whatsoever. Mm-hmm. A very, very deep connection with her. So when she was uncomfortable or, the, or there was any discomfort, it actually did make me go, oh, wait a minute. Mm. And it's mainly because she wasn't, you know, a nagger. Mm. So, that's awesome. uh, when she spoke, she it's, it, it, it it resonated, you know, and it rang in my ears real loud. And I remember, I was so exhausted in that process of mm-hmm. making that album that I went to open my mouth to defend myself for all of my actions, <laughs> and I just cried. Mm. It's just tears. I couldn't even get the words. Out. Yeah. And I'm she sure. came over and hugged me. It was like, nah, it's alright. I, I get it. Like, mm-hmm. no words were said. Um, Is it? It's okay, these little it's, moments it's like this. Right. It's alright. It's alright. Right. It ain't killing. Me. Hopefully, it ain't killing our uh, our listening audience. Yeah. But um, but I remember after that, I, I promised her. I was like, "Look, I'm not gonna. I'm I'm done. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not gonna tell the world I'm done. I'm not gonna make a big retirement thing. But I was like, I'm ready to start figuring out how to deal with issues in my life without hitting the booth. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So, wow. I was done with the album um, September 12th. Mm. By January 13th, I was like, man. And I think that's kind of where the prayer came in. Like, you know, is there something that can distract me? Is there some artists or artists that I can like mm. put my creative energy into so mm-hmm. I can feel like I'm doing something, yeah. even if I'm not making a record and uh, you know so you walked in and it was kind of like I didn't know what shape or form that was going to come in mm-hmm. uh, but you walked in the door and it was like are you fat rat and, <laughs> and the rest is history but yeah it's so funny because I was in a place where I mean I, I think I needed you in a similar right. similar sense where you know I was lost in what to do I had no idea what to do I'm just this young don't know what I'm I just I know I want to be a rapper you know right yeah I just wanted to be a rapper that's what I wanted to do and uh, my mom was just like yo you should go to the studio or you should look for studios Mm -hmm. saw your name I hit you up on Facebook I remember at one point Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then um then showed up and it just that whole recording of through the stampede right I think it I don't know, it taught me a lot, and you showed me a lot just uh, about myself. But that was just the beginning, really. That was, yeah, the, yeah that yeah. was definitely the beginning. You're a sponge, though. So that mm. was the good thing about you. Like, you wanted to know. And, uh, and, and knowledge, you know, obviously, you add a little wisdom, which mm. you got now, you mm-hmm. know, you got to live a little bit for that. And then ultimately, that understanding, mm-hmm. you know, is you can almost. Uh, conquer anything Mm -hmm. and right then at that point in your life you had a serious thirst for knowledge Mm -hmm. and I respected that because a lot of young people I mean you was like 20 yeah and they are only looking at 21 so they can legally buy a beer they already been drinking but (laughs) like that's about as far as their goals are uh, they're looking towards their goals and you you wanted so much information Mm-hmm. And you were thirsting for it, and you wanted to be fed by it. And so, you know, as a as a um, a elder statesman, even at that time, I really respected that. Mm-hmm. Man, this kid want to know mm-hmm. because I was working with a lot of artists that didn't want to know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't want to know what's behind the curtain. Just give me a record. Exactly. Right. I don't want to know what's behind the curtain. Just give me a a video. Mm-hmm. You know. But you was like, Nah, I want to know. Like, yeah, like this show is me what the I'm process. gonna do. Yeah. this is what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life. Right. Like, tell me, like, what's tell me, man? 
and you welcomed it. You were like, arms open. I, I was looking at a clip on my computer I just found mm -hmm. of us at the, uh, for, for the for the um, for the money video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And somehow we got to talking about Cool Hurt mm -hmm. and Grandmaster Flash mm -hmm. and, and, and Africa Bambada. And when I look back at that video now, it it speaks to who you are because mm. I was like, yo, you don't know Africa Bambada? And you was like, nope, but I want to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, know. now that I'm looking back at that, it was like you wanted to come in the culture you know, no, make a nose, nose that. Mm. Like, I ain't just trying to rap. I just want to know what I'm doing. Yeah. Why, why am I here and who was here before me and mm -hmm. how can I influence people after me, you know? That was so important for me. And, like, um, I was not around the culture ever mm -hmm. growing up. And so I mm -hmm. definitely wanted to be a sponge and wanted to learn. But what y'all taught, taught me, and a little more quick background was... Mm -hmm. um, Fat uh, recorded and mixed through the Stampede. Mm -hmm. uh, he put together a collective called New Success Culture. Several MCs, some like the, the dopest, all came together and we made two albums together. Then he recorded and mixed um, my 2016 album, Soda, mm -hmm. um, and dropping his own music all along the way. So we, we did a lot of projects and we did a lot of things together. But what y'all all together and you being the, the lead of that, it it brought in my just perspective of just so much more than music. Mm. Um, it was the the culture that y'all grew up in. That mm -hmm. I just did not know anything. And mm -hmm. it, honestly, I could never thank y'all enough for that because it, oh, who yeah. I am today, it was it was severely affected. Just oh, yeah. I mean, merely by stories. Yeah. Even um, just listening and knowing that um, or trusting y'all. Like I know you're not lying to me. Mm -hmm. These are real things mm -hmm. that that happened to you, and mm -hmm. it. That was like just the most, it's just so much deeper than music. It's a two way street though. Mm -hmm. And uh, luckily at that, at that point in life, I had already had some of that action coming back the other way. Mm -hmm. But um, it's a message. And the thing about a message is it has to be someone to send it, but it has to be somebody to receive it. Mm -hmm. so, so true. You know, you can give thanks to that moment um, and respect due, but thank yourself for positioning yourself to receive. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, how many artists think they know already and they're running, you know, run and shoot, they're gone. You mm -hmm. know, they're like, yeah, I hear you. Mm -hmm. When I was, you know, like Eminem was the first rapper, so I'm not even really worrying about it. <laughs> I'm 21 <laughs> years old. It's pretty much Eminem is, is the GOAT, you know? Yeah. So, um, which is not to discredit his GOAT status if anybody thinks that he's the GOAT. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think he's the an exceptional MC. I, mm -hmm. I can't think of anyone better, you know, so that says a lot all of all yeah. in itself. Um but you 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 like I said, part of it is I'm gonna walk. And what I wanna find out about the artists that walk with me, not behind me, is do you really wanna catch up on what you missed? Mm. And um and that's how I was and, and I respect that in an artist. They don't have to do it, but I think that um, we'll always be ins inspired by our predecessors. Mm -hmm. And so we at least have to know, like sometimes when we get off our way, you know, um, we need to remember what it was all about. Love, peace, unity, having fun, period. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was all about increasing the peace, mm -hmm. uniting people. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we can use rap music, which is not hip hop culture. It's just, mm -hmm. it's a part of hip hop culture, yeah. you know, but we can use it and weaponize it and mm -hmm. do some other things with it. Definitely. But every every now and again, you got to tap back into the source mm -hmm. and realize, hold on, what am I what am I actually trying to do here? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to deliver a message. Mm -hmm. You know, I just had I was on a conference call not too long ago with somebody who referred to hip hop as folk music, and it kind of took. I was like, hmm. I didn't say nothing on the Zoom, right? Mm -hmm. I guess my face was talking, and so <laughs> somebody was like, um, it was a professor at uh, USC actually wow. that jumped on and, and was I guess he was looking at my face and was like, what you what you think about that, Fat? Mm -hmm. And then I took two seconds, you know, because I think about Justin and what he's done with his music, mm -hmm. uh, Justin Smith. Mm. And he taught me so much more about folk music, but folk is about stories. I so when I thought about it, you know, it's hip hop that told me what Compton was like. Mm. I lived in Virginia, I don't know. It was hip hop that told me what Queensbridge and the Bronx was. You mm -hmm. know, it was hip hop that told me Luke 
had the girls getting busy in Miami. You know, mm-hmm. it was hip hop that told me about Scarface in Texas. I had never been to the Fifth Ward. Yeah. There was those stories. You mm-hmm. know, it was hip hop that told me about Twister in Chicago and put me in all these different places. You know, mm-hmm. and so um, so or, or or Outkast and Goody Mob in Atlanta. What's East Point? So you know, what's 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 uh what's a, what what did the Dungeon family do? And 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 it, and these are stories from mm-hmm. all these different areas that connected us. Yeah. Because through those stories, we found out that police were harassing NWA in Compton. Mm-hmm. Well, we getting harassed too in Virginia. Mm-hmm. And we found out that there's an influx in, in drugs being sold mm-hmm. in New York. Well, man, we dealing with that too, crime and poverty. Like uniting. Yeah, uniting. so now I know that you're not actually that different. You might mm-hmm. dress a little different, mm-hmm. but through your story, your lingo might be a little different. Mm-hmm. But over time, we've learned to adopt that too, mm-hmm. you know? You can put on an outfit and be like, I'm on my West Coast tip today mm-hmm. where my Chucks and my Dickies at. You know, you can put on your Timbos and you're on your, you're on your New York flavor, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So when I thought about it even deeper, there is a folk element to hip hop, yeah. you know? Uh, now it's more of a popular music, so we just make songs and dance mm-hmm. to. But when you think about the roots of it, 80s, 90s, it told a story, especially in the 90s, about where these people were from mm-hmm. and how they were living. So, um, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's on a tangent, but yeah. yeah. No, but anyway, it's, it's, totally good. it's important that you wanted to know these things yeah. because you're putting your notch in along with all these other notches. Yeah, you know. I think so. What, I mean, that makes me think about so many things. But one thing that I, I want to touch on was that. So this, we were. This was um, what we were doing was a serious thing. It was there was a lot of love and there's a lot of family, yeah. and there was a lot of um, acceptance. But it was. When I say serious, it was um, like there's a lot of work and there's de- Heavy commitment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's dedication. There's yeah, there's, yeah. there's tears. There's yeah. Um, it might not have been blood, but it felt like it. Like there was like probably was oh, yeah I mean, some sweat too. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely sweat. It was I mean late nights, early mornings. There it was for three years for me, maybe four, like three or four years. It was like nonstop. It felt like yeah. There was whether even like lo- helping to build love piece in hip hop. Yep. Um, yep. With I, I went from being just this twenty year old kid to I was the sponge and I soaked in so much. You watched it first year. Yep. Performed yep. second, third, and fourth year. Mm-hmm. Ran marketing communications for it. Mm-hmm. Like you went from literally standing watching the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And saying yo, I gotta get on that stage to being so much more. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it. it I mean, one thing it taught me was the first off, artists are like such a small piece of like a whole machine. Yeah, really, it's like uh, you have a luxury if you get to just be the artist. Like that's amazing for you if you get to be that. But the everything, it was so eye opening to how. I mean, really, the biggest thing was love, peace, and hip hop was making that come to life, where it was so easy to just be like. Oh no, the first year when I performed, it wasn't wasn't easy. It was like that was a big deal. Right. But then the. When I, it was one year where I helped so much behind the scenes, and then I performed too, and that was way different. It yeah. was so much because it was like the performance was like, ah, oh, um, but everything else was so stressful. It's stressful. stressful, yeah. And that was very, it, it was good for my development, but it was hard. It's definitely hard. But what I'm trying it's to get unique, at though. is unique for you. you yeah, had, you caught a really unique experience. So unique. So I'm so glad that I did. But kind of what I'm saying too is, um, it was. We have almost like a, it was a mob mentality. Like we, right. it was, this was, these were all the livelihoods. And it's not just right. one person. It's, it's, you got a whole group of people fighting for one thing. And there's a lot of, a lot of passion um, and a lot of, a lot. a lot of love. I just kind of want, I want to hear some of your thoughts on that. How you kind mm. of, you work through that. I, like, I don't know. It's um when you're dealing with so many minds and right. you see what I'm saying? Right. And you're the, you're the lead of that. It's right. difficult. Right. It's a lot of stress. Yeah, it is. Um, hmm. I'll say this. It's a, um it's a big question. I feel fortunate that um somehow the universe uh, or God Almighty considered me for that position. Mm. I think for a while I was like I'm nicer than these dudes. Let me let me get some shine on the radio, man. Like mm-hmm. my stories are real, you know. Like 
nobody in my crew got to turn their head the other way when I start rapping because I'm lying. Mm -hmm. Everybody can be like, oh yeah, now nah, he ain't lying. You know, like my stories are real, my skill set is better. Mm -hmm. Why am I standing behind this other rapper, this manufacturer? You mm -hmm. know, I'm the real deal, right? <clears throat> and so I would be like, yo, everybody know me. They know my story is real. All I need is the right record and I'm out mm -hmm. because I don't have to go through the criticism of a new artist that people like, who is this dude? You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Even if the record is tight, they like, oh yeah, that's facts. That's, that's, that's a go. Mm -hmm. like, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Let them pass go and get two hundred. So I was like, let me let me go, man. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Show tight, all these things are working. Mm -hmm. And so for a while I think I was very concerned that that wasn't working. But later on I began to understand that I had to hold something in my hand that if the roles were reversed, I don't know if another artist could have. Mm. And so that was, um, that's real. You know, everybody's called called to do something. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, and so some artists got record deals. Some artists, you know, um, you know, had some hits and kept it independent, and made a lot of money like that. Some some people sold some great records. What I ended up getting uh, out of the game was a very sustainable. Mm -hmm. Um, and allowed me not to have to punch a clock. Yeah. And it also kept me very humble. Mm. So it allowed me to keep working. Um, and I think through that work, I found artists like you, mm -hmm. Lalisa, Chad, Ram Bruce, um, He's a Heen, you know, in Perth. Because um, had it worked out another way, we would have missed each other, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's true. Um, I'm thankful that I was able to have this. And now I look at it much much different and, and and part of what's held that together when you speak about love is you have to feel like those people that cross your path were intended to mm -hmm. you know you can't be looking at people like man what's this the person trying to take from me That's true. it's a, these people are messengers you know mm -hmm. what i mean so it's like you brought a message to me and mm -hmm. that message in 2013 was don't hang up your creativity yet mm -hmm. i hadn't even wrote a rhyme because i was in this fake I'm not gonna rap no more mode, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I think of a rhyme and I'm like, oh no, I don't rap no more, you know? <laughs> and then I'm recording your album, we get to about the summertime and you're like, yo, I got the song I wanna put you on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, secretly now that I'm thinking back on it, I probably didn't reveal this then, but I was like, mm, he wants me to rap again. Yeah. <laughs> they calling me to suit up, yeah. you know? Because I hadn't wrote anything. You know, I wrote one rap for my birthday, that was my birthday present to myself. Mm -hmm. And I just wasn't writing, you know, on mm -hmm. purpose. And so you was like, yo, I want you to jump on this record. And I was like, okay. And then, you know, obviously later you wanted to do the video and all that, and that mm -hmm. gave me a reason to pop back out again, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you brought a message, and that message was, you're not done yet. Mm -hmm. So, it's beautiful. you know, lace your boots back up, because mm -hmm. you're riding cold kind of now, you know. And, and that was great, you know, that, that was uh, what I needed at the time, you know. Mm -hmm. But back to what I was saying, if you're not looking for the message, I could have been bitter, I could have been like, I ain't trying to hear this white dude rap about something, man. Mm -hmm. Miss the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Miss, miss, miss my blessing. You miss your blessing. The whole thing just. But instead, we was able to build something. And when you look at it like that, I think you appreciate it. And from that appreciation, the love is born because mm -hmm. you realize, man, I got to this step because of these people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So they become a very they woven into your life a different way. You know yeah, what I mean? So yeah. it's like you you respect the weave game on that because you mm -hmm. know. I can't even imagine. You don't walk through the door, and I know you don't look at it like that because you're like, oh, Fez would have always been doing something. Mm -hmm. But would I have? Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, we, so you know, it's not about an ego boost or nothing like that, but it's just real talk. You got to know that you affect people in a way. Mm -hmm. You want to make it positive. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> And that's where the love comes in at because you realize I'm going to affect this person. Mm -hmm. And when you know you hold that type of power and influence, then it becomes your job to figure out how you want to do that and if, and if positivity which i recommend <laughs> is the way then you got to be sharp about that approach you mm -hmm. know? and so that that comes with a lot of love a lot of understanding a lot of patience remembering i was 20 before mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and uh and and respecting that because let's not forget you were drinking chocolate milk no beer yet we was, in the, <laughs> we was at the show we was at the show in charleston and it hit me that's when oh, i knew i had to make sure i was setting a good example because we were all 
That's so funny. kicking it, and you over there by yourself, just you had your chocolate milk. I said, oh, shit. <laughs> twenty years old, I man. Was let, in me make sure, house. let me make sure I get him home. His mm. mom is gonna be looking for him, you know. But we we had a blast, man, and traveled, and mm. I mean, I couldn't take one 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 moment of it back because mm. uh, uh, it was through those times and those hard times that that jailed the product together. You yeah, know? yeah, I think so. It, <clears throat> I mean, just to continue on this a little bit. Mm-hmm. I might have to in a second I got five minutes for this but um i want people to like know how it really wasn't just like you were recording my album or mixing my album this was like a our relationship is, is deeper it was yeah. there was a, a time when it was every day rolling yeah. with each other for i mean i mean it seems like, it seems like all day. Yeah, yeah yeah i mean like all i mean all day right, pretty right, much. Right. And we're we're brainstorming on ways to grow. We're talking through things. We're trying to figure out different marketing tactics. I mean, all and trying to make music and dealing with I me. Mean, you're teaching me how to handle myself in a business way. Right. Um, I'm making mistakes here and there, and you're doing the best you can to be like, here's how, like, here's how you really should do it. Right. That. Right. Right, um, right. It was, it was like that for. I mean, at least I feel like two years probably. Yeah, I'd say after the second new SC album in 15 um yeah what well kind of like right before that you mm. came in with this role of wanting to produce more on the actual album and mm. pitching your ideas to oh, the yeah, group oh yeah 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 um and so Bruce made some pitches then you made some pitches and uh like four three or four records of yours stuck yeah, i know I so. no four times i know flying flying four yeah flying and then um it might have been another one. Yeah, too. I think there's one more. But. There's one more, but to me, I kind of sat back and I was like, "Okay, all right," because you know, that's not an easy group of MCs to pitch to. Mm-hmm. They're skilled, they're talented, they have history, mm-hmm. they can do it by themselves. It's a choice to do it together. Mm-hmm. That's a rough bunch to be like, "Hey, I got this idea," you know. Um, especially with you being the youngest of the group, mm-hmm. on top of all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. when I saw you make those pitches, I was like, okay. And then I think you wrote the hook for Flying Four too. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we brought in Gigi Sly. Yeah. But um, I kind of sat back right then, and I saw that you had some leadership um, qualities, and um, and I think as we began to ease into Soda, I I felt comfortable taking the curtain down mm-hmm. and saying. You know, come on in here. You want to see what goes on? Uh, and at which point you find out it wasn't that glamorous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's, that's a perfect let's pause there before we get into this. Okay. Yeah, so you pull back the curtain on the curtain. <laughs> on this around the soda time. And this, for me, this was a very interesting time. Um, I was with a girlfriend at the time. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, I was trying to make it in music. I mm-hmm. was trying to manage all the things that we're managing mm-hmm. and also start a business <laughs> yes. and survive off what I was trying what what I could yes um this was probably this was one of the most stressful times of my life doing all that at the same time yes. as a 23 year old yes um but I want to hear like how from your perspective because you were so incredibly giving during that right. time right um you gave so much of your own time that was not paid for or anything. It was just we believed in each other. Right, right. Um, still do. Yeah, still yeah, do. yeah. Still I appreciate do. that. Jesus and Spice Wars. Yeah, yeah I've <laughs> been through so much. Yeah. So, like, for what's your perspective on, like, that specific time? You know, that was an interesting time. I think the other thing that I have to mention is me and Shaquise kind of broke up the that empire. That was a huge part. That was a yep. huge thing. And Shaquise took the film company, um, and uh, you know I maintained the level. The uh, uh, well, me and Cuddy Cuz maintained the label and the festival. Mm-hmm. And um, you know <laughs> that was a stressful time because 
it's funny how you think it's stressful, then you look back on it and it's like, <laughs> What's that we stress? just came out of a pandemic. I'm pretty sure, yeah, yeah. Pretty sure I, I could, do, I could do 2016 again <laughs> yeah. with my eyes closed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, 16 was, um, it was, it was, um, hmm. You needed to step up and I didn't know that you needed to, but you somehow knew you needed to. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, can, can I say one thing yeah, about that? Um, yeah. The Shaquise situation, without getting too deep into mm -hmm. it, it was, I was um, not like really traumatized, but I was like, it's like when your parents get divorced or something. Right. I was right. like, what the hell? Like, what? Right. This is, it was, I don't believe I knew really before it was all said, but it yeah. was very, I think at that point he, um, and if we need to take anything out, we can, no, but it was just no, like, why? I looked up to him. Right. Um, and it wasn't the same as with you because me and you hung out we way spent more. So much time, right. Yeah, but I definitely was like, he's a leadership role. This dude's like super. Right. He got on the bar, knows what he's doing, knows what he's saying. Right. And I'm not taking anything away from him now, but right, it just right, everybody. Right. It was like everybody, like everybody has their whatevers, and everybody right. has to do their own thing. thing. Right. Um, and it just was a really big realization that it was like when you start to realize your parents are. They're just big babies, right. kind of, and they mess up too, mm -hmm, and they have mm -hmm. mistakes, and not, right. they don't always get along. And it was, I think that's what I realized, and that's why I was like, no one else is gonna do any of the things that he did, so mm -hmm. I gotta, I have to, or like everything we're doing, what's gonna happen? Was it's all in jeopardy? Mm -hmm. No, um, and, and that's very astute, because like you said, you're twenty uh, three at the time. Yeah, yeah twenty three. And uh, it, I, c I can imagine that is like parents divorcing. It was, um, yeah, for sure. And me and Shaquise go back so far, uh, and and you know, when I because I do look at people like my real family, mm -hmm. I'm very careful about how finite I like to make separations. Mm -hmm. You know, people get into this thing sometimes where they where they go. I don't want to deal with you no more, ever. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, first of all, you gotta be careful when you tell me that, because I do take that to heart, and I'll be like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> You've never seen never, somebody. Never talk to you again. <laughs> yeah. You've never seen somebody like that vanish. You know, you gotta be careful with that, because I wouldn't mm -hmm. say that to somebody, because the truth is, and I tell you this all the time, mm -hmm. if I love you, I always love you, mm -hmm. and if I stop loving you, then I never did. You mm -hmm. know, and I take that to heart. I can't diss or disrespect anybody that I built things with um, mm -hmm. because only we know what we built. Mm -hmm. And um, exactly. it's not it's not honorable to then go out in public and go and, and you know just take a shit on what we built. Mm -hmm. um, I honor that and I respect that. So what me and Shaquise did, it was simply, we was, I think we were at that time um, taking a break from the intensity of all the things we had built that really was, I mean, we built so much. Yeah, <laughs> it, was so, did. it was so hard to to hold it, you mm -hmm. know? And, um, and I think we needed to split some of the company direction up. And I think extracting the film part out of it. Yeah. And you see what Shakees is doing with film now. So it's like, you know, it was the right yeah, thing, you know? Yeah. So the festival grew because of it. Mm -hmm. uh, OTR grew because of it. And I still take pride of being, you know, um, a founding member of OTR mm -hmm. because I believed in what he could do. Mm -hmm. You know, I really did, and I saw what he could do for me. So mm -hmm. um, to know that it's still alive and afloat and, and prospering, thriving rather, yeah, um, it was the right time. I think we just were juggling way too much yeah. between the three of us. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna shoot with him one day, he in the studio with me one day, we build a festival together, mm -hmm. another. Like we needed to break it up and hire new people on, on both sides, yeah. you know? For sure. So you did see that and, um, but but once again, you know, it's cloth talk. You actually saw two people uh, that you had respect for mm -hmm. amicably part mm -hmm. and support each other on their new endeavors. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like that sweet, mm -hmm. but when you make a decision that you're not gonna let it be sour, mm -hmm. that's what happens. You see what I'm yeah. saying? So you have to make a conscious decision. And that's and that's for young people across the board to know. You can crank it up mm -hmm. and really make it bad if you want to, mm -hmm. um, 
but for what? It's true. And one thing, what I I'm I consider myself a guy. I believe that I am an empath. Right. So I really feel people's energies really well, and then it. It's why I can't really have too long a conversation sometimes before I feel really drained. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I'm, I try to, when I have a conversation, I'm really, in, give it yeah, all. I'm mm -hmm. trying to give my mom invested. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, some people, they don't drain me, but a lot of people do. And mm -hmm. it's nothing bad about it. It's just, right. um, I'm just really invested or they're really intense, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing that is because I rolled with you so much, mm -hmm. and this is a little deeper, it, I felt your, stress and your sadness yeah. when things went wrong yep. and it felt and that's another thing it felt like it was mm -hmm. um my duty to be like how can i take some of that off of them off of them right um and so like even like with that situation specifically no. or with people le leaving the group and no like, no no i totally felt it um it is <laughs> you you did mimic a you know that that's what I would have done for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how you knew that, but it's how I've always been. When things get tight, I just get tighter. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, um, for sure. I made music in some of the tightest spots in my life. You mm -hmm. know, I, I, I was able to thread the needle and still come out with some great product. And I took that along with me in life, you know? Mm -hmm. um, while I had that before I even came to the music was, you know, a tight spot ain't gonna get me. You gotta knock me off. Mm. And um, and I haven't met anybody that truly, you know, not in the realm of business and music, mm -hmm. that truly wanted to knock me off. Did they want to make it difficult for me? Sure. Yeah. You know, yeah. did they not want to support it? Sure. Mm -hmm. But that's different than somebody trying to knock you off. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, um coming out of that environment where people want, want to knock you off or that lifestyle mm -hmm. uh, and coming into this, I don't look at a threat like a threat uh, that somebody else might say, yeah. oh man, they blocking my access or whatever. Like that ain't no, mm -hmm. there's nothing between me and getting getting to that. Like there's not a soul that can stand between me and getting to what I got to get to. Yeah. And um, that's what I tell y'all too. Mm -hmm. Y'all all feel the same way because y'all yeah. seen the way out like, what we got to do, who we got to talk to. We yeah. can figure it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, there's nothing that can take us there. So it was stressful, and it's funny that you um, did absorb that, um, but I think that's, the result of that is soda. Yeah. Because you yeah, gave me yeah. so much that all I could think to do was alley -oop it back to you. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, he held me down for the summer. I got to get this. I got to, like, I, I look at soda like, uh, one of my albums mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. not because I wrote the rhymes on it, but just because I was so invested in the production of it, mm -hmm. you know, probably more so than I had ever been in an album um, before mm -hmm. and, uh, and it being good and it working for you, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And, um, and so, yeah, no, that's definitely, that was the Dr. Dre moment for me. I get it when he says how deep he had to get in with Snoop Dogg to create Doggy Style, mm -hmm. or how deep he had to get in with Eminem to mm -hmm. to make the Marshall Mathers LP, you know, like so. Um, but yeah, it was stressful. We were able to somehow balance it. Yeah. Um, but like any good stress, it just grows. So yeah, it's so true. <laughs> it just got bigger. Yeah. At some point, you gotta you gotta you know t hit the valve, release valve. Yeah, yeah. But uh, we were able to bounce stress around until we got an album out of it. So yeah, exactly. It was all good. And that, or what you said about Dr. Dre too, is it makes me think about. Um, that's I really wish I don't think people can really understand unless they've had um it's a mentor protege type relationship mm -hmm. but it was just so it's just a such a deep and emotional intensity because mm -hmm. it's like your dreams and mm -hmm. then you're, it's you're looking at future and past kind of almost and it's just so it's so much when you're fighting so hard and then yeah and you don't always reach those goals there's like it's it's, it's, a, it's a lot wrapped up in a relationship like that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a lot wrapped up because what you're talking about here is um, someone's art, right? Mm -hmm. And then their art is, or should be, mm -hmm. um, probably one of the things that means the absolute most to them. It should be very reflective of who they are, right? Yeah. So we're not talking about selling um, tires here, you know. <laughs> you, we could get mad at each other for missing a load of tires, mm -hmm. but 
and, and, and that's a good way to look at it. If we, if we were in any, any other type of business and we mm-hmm. were in the tire selling business and and somehow I messed up and or, or you messed up or we mm-hmm. messed up and bought the wrong thing mm-hmm. or one of our shipments got messed up. The only reason we're mad is because of the product. Mm-hmm. We're not personally connected to the tires. Yeah. We didn't feel like the tires were mistreated when they were stolen. You know, mm-hmm. we don't go, oh, our tires. Mm-hmm. How, how are they feeling? You know, yeah. we're just saying somebody got our product. Yeah. You turn that into music, though. Mm-hmm. If somebody feels slighted with their music, it's a personal slight to mm-hmm. them. You know, if you don't treat their music fairly, if you don't mm-hmm. treat their music timely. Mm-hmm. So and, many feelings. Uh, oh, a lot yeah. of feelings. So. Both sides, it's an emotional contract. Mm-hmm. You know, you're talking about trusting somebody with your art, mm-hmm. and along with the person that you trust in. You know, do they really feel as strongly about what you're doing as they say they are? Mm-hmm. What's their motives behind this? You know, what's the end goal? Sure, yeah. And you always have to be constantly reevaluating that. Mm-hmm. Um, I never doubted that with you. That was a good. Thing. And I was yeah. just getting ready to say we mm-hmm. moved a lot of that out mm-hmm. of the way because of how serious we took our relationship early. Mm-hmm. There was no disrespect involved. There was no sliding involved. Mm-hmm. I always brought my best game. You always brought your best game, and that's how you grow. Because mm-hmm. yeah. it's hard to dive in mm-hmm. because of that foundation and the way it was built. Mm-hmm. You can call me ten, 10 years from now and go. I got an idea I need to work on. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter mm-hmm. because you know you're calling somebody who has integrity. Mm-hmm. And and a lot of times that's hard to develop. And mm-hmm. I don't think we were actually working on developing it. It just it happened. happened because we weren't playing with what we were trying to do. Mm-hmm. We were dead serious, you know. <laughs> yeah, and that, so I kind of want to get to the more recent stuff. That, mm. So speaking of like being able to just call you. Right. I, pretty sure i or maybe you did it to me the first time i can't remember who did the first but over the past like five months ish Mm -hmm. there was a a series of phone calls Mm -hmm. um i don't think they were anything super big at first i think you were calling me about some well when you left to go to la yeah it was like i didn't know if you were coming back so i said yeah that's what i gotta give him a nice gift make sure i tell him to be safe yeah we met (laughs) right we We were at a coffee shop yeah so but that was the and if I get, ever get too deep, you just let, no, let me know. No, um, no, no, I'm, no, no. I, I think it's important. Go um, deep. Yeah. So I put it like this: I give you the interview before I get to somebody else. No uh, distance. Yeah. No, no distance. <laughs> WLTX. It's a great cup of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> I just moved that to the side. <laughs> and I, I appreciate that. I, I think it's. I mean, no one can have this conversation like we right. did, obviously. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, so like around the the 2017 time, mm-hmm. so we we put out soda and mm-hmm. we worked. I mean, fucking hard pushing that thing. We, yeah. it, I mean, it even I think stirred up feelings with other people about yeah. like how much work we're putting into this one album. Yes, um, and it it was it was a lot. I mean, it was a lot. And then um, that whole beginning of 2017, I know for me it just was. I don't think I realized it, but I think I was. I felt so much pressure that I had put on myself really and no one had put on me and I, I didn't know that I was about to blow, (laughs) (laughs) but I think I was about, I I mean, I did. I blew. Um, and it took like after soda, I think it had to do with feeling like let down Mm -hmm. when you don't make what you, or you don't make it. The impact. Yeah. The impact. Yeah. yeah, Right. It's like, you feel like you have such a good product and we worked so hard on it. Mm -hmm. And even though it did, I mean, it did, really good um but you know you just want we want more yeah you want more um Um, and it so i mean that on top of all this pressure it just over those next like it wasn't a full year it's probably nine months i think it was just like one thing one thing after After the other yeah Yeah. (laughs) what is your perspective on that time and even to the point where we started to butt heads a little bit Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. over that nine months and i mean my perspective is just that i'm I feel like I was growing so fast mm-hmm. and I was learning so much. Then I, you just start to get your own thoughts, your own opinions right. or, or really also I was just really stressed and overwhelmed. Yes. And yeah. so I didn't know it was just too much. I just, I, I didn't know. Well, yeah. you had a, you had a year. We kicked off the year in LA. Yep. Um, Which I was actually had a blast really out there. Yeah, yeah, we had a blast. <laughs> so 2017 wasn't all bad no, folks. No, no. It kicked off in the yeah. right way. Uh, no. Shout out to Stefan for the drop top Camaro. That was uh, good. That was a good moment. <laughs> that we ran out of gas in Compton <laughs> because that's where Fat Red and uh, Cole Connor should be uh, yeah. running out of gas. Yeah. At, uh, mm. But anyway, so yeah, we had a blast in LA. <laughs> yeah. 
um, in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Chris Dow Bubbling. Uh, we had some sushi with some cool had some people. some sushi, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout out to the Dangerous that Crew. That was a really good time. Yeah, yeah that, was, really that was a good time. But yeah, we got back and I think a few things were at stake. Um, Shaquise was gone mm-hmm. and this was the uh, first festival without Shaquise. Mm-hmm. So that put me in high stress mode. Mm-hmm put you in high stress mode yeah. because obviously we've already covered that when I'm in high stress mode, you are so close by, <laughs> you cannot not mm-hmm. get the blowback. Mm-hmm. Even when I stand firm, mm-hmm. it's like me just standing firm, but you can see the wind <laughs> yeah. tearing my face off, right? Like there's no way for you not to get it, right? Yeah. So you're standing so close to me that you are absorbing some of the direct hits I'm taking. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so we got through that. Yeah, We moved in 2017 in the taps. Yep. So that was a big. That, that was, was big another move. stressful situation. Yeah, you know, finding a, mm-hmm. a home base for what we were doing and mm-hmm. trying to get it right and have all the things we needed to operate mm-hmm. effectively in it. I know one thing for me, I, I that, and it's no one's. It's not your fault. Mm-hmm. I just I, that put so much pressure on me. I didn't realize mm-hmm. because I was trying to run my own business because I was I was broke. I didn't have any money. Right. I was like right. so struggling. But then I'm also like feel this pressure to I need to like we need to make money in we this need, place. We need we to need like have events. Money. We need to do this, and that that added to it. I actually forgot about that part. Yeah. That oh man, thing. that move. So you're talking about a festival, mm-hmm. a move, a breakup for you. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that was the same time. Same that time. So I'm dealing with all these. You're dealing with emotions. all of this yeah. stuff, and. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm still on your shit every day about mm-hmm. everything, you know, mm-hmm. uh, which my on your shit is so much every day that you probably forget about it. Some, <laughs> <laughs> like when you think back on it, because I'm on my own shit. I'm on my own shit all mm-hmm. the time. So it's like I don't think anything about getting on somebody else's, if, yeah. you know, if they after it. But you can just take those three things alone. Mm-hmm. The the move the where you graduated to in the festival and the mm. pressure that was on you to deliver festival wise as communications director mm-hmm. and marketing um yeah she keeps being gone mm-hmm. um and then you know a a, a a a bad breakup in the sense that i i don't know the specifics but i know you were affected by it mm-hmm. and so Anything that you're affected by on that level. Yeah, Yeah. it was was a long relationship. Yeah, it was a long relationship. And so to see you hurt, Mm -hmm. obviously I'm going to take notice, you Mm -hmm. know. And so, you know, us butting heads, eh, you know. But at the same time, we, and this is what you want. You want to go out the way you came in. Mm Mm-hmm with love and respect. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So you keep the respect intact. Mm -hmm. That's why I can pick the horn up and call Shaquise. Mm -hmm. Keep the respect intact. I don't have to like everything you do. Mm -hmm. And I can also tell you, I don't really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. But I don't have to go as far as as to challenge who you are Mm character-wise or things like that. And so, yeah, it was a great time for you to um, embark. More than anything, I think one of the things you were wanted to do was to test your knowledge out. I think really more than all of the yeah, things I named, so. yeah. I think you had absorbed so much mm-hmm. that you were willing to see what you had. Mm-hmm. And that's actual, that's so, yeah. I, the, it, you, if you say that to me, that probably is less button heads actually. Mm. But that may have been very hard. I'm suspecting mm-hmm. to even articulate at that point. But yeah, now in I hindsight, anything, yeah, yeah, I think that would have been hard. But I think that that's, Ultimately, we can say all those other things. I mm-hmm. think you had just learned so much, you was ready to try it out, mm-hmm. as you should, mm-hmm. and as I should want you to. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, and that goes for pretty much everybody. Yeah. That's La Lisa, Bruce, like everybody got to a point where they was like, "Yo, I'm gonna try something out." Yeah. You know, and and even uh, with Heezy Heen, mm-hmm. I mean, they cranking the Born Naturals back up, mm-hmm. and a lot of that stuff is. Yo, Fed showed us this, this, and this. So let's mm-hmm. see if we can apply it. You know? Do you ever think that it's partly that um, let me just see where I am. Yeah, we're good. I partly that you kind of not only do you attract leaders to yourself, but you bred leaders, and that it's difficult sometimes for all these leaders to be in the same room. Do you ever think? About well, that? it's 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 like you said. It's 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 the mob. Mm, yeah. So y'all are all supposed to be leaders. Mm-hmm. I need you here mm-hmm. because somebody got to take the seat, right? Mm-hmm. At some point. 
You can't mm-hmm. take this seat if you t- if you you know going to pick up takeout. You know, <laughs> so you, so you need to eat this stuff mm-hmm. and you need to live it and you need to try it mm-hmm. because the real respect. So you got respect for me mm-hmm. because of our age difference and I'm helping you do something you want to do. Mm-hmm. That's good respect, yeah, right? Part. Go out there and try to do it yourself. Mm-hmm. You'll finish that circle mm-hmm. of respect. Mm-hmm. Then when you come back around, you go, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's thanks, important. Fat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, thanks, because now you understand, mm-hmm. you know. And I think that that is just growth all the way around. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's just good, positive growth because we don't really know what we got until we try it out. Mm-hmm. That's can we? I want to pause here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because, super, uh, super humility. Yeah, you're right about the the humility part. Right, um, and right. you, I don't know. You just there's. I just want to say you taught me so much, like just so much. Um, and I don't know if that connects with what we just said a second ago, but. I, I was thinking about that while you're talking and I was like, right. I just want to say that again. And another thing that I think I was going through is, yeah, I wanted to, to test things out and I don't think I knew that. I, I, right. I really don't. I think I, you know, what something that kind of haunted me while we weren't talking was there was a moment where we had just, we had butted heads about something. Right. And um, you called me and you, I don't know, it wasn't like apology. It was just kind of like a, I love you. It was kind of like right, you wanted to right, tell right, me right, 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 right. And you were like, or maybe I said it was something like, "I want to be on a yacht with you, popping bottles in twenty years, or something right, like that." Right. And then we had this falling out of sorts. Right. And for the next couple of years, I always thought about that moment. I was like, "I bet he thinks I was lying," because it just, it, no. as it was like a, no, 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 as it was a, it just, anyways, it. It just it was one of the things that stays with you. Like, yeah, damn. no, no, when no, you, no. When you haven't made the full circle yet. Right, when you haven't made the circle yet. Yeah, it's like, ah, damn. Is it, can it be again? Can it, it will be again. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's important to know. It will yeah. be again. So here's, when everything, when I started to, so all these things are happening, and this is around September-ish of 2017. Right. Um, I met. Right. And... I don't even know the the best way to describe it, but it, she was somebody that I had never met anyone like her that was interested mm, in me. And right. I, I, it was like a mutual thing. Right. She was, which is a good thing. Yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, exactly. And it, I was intrigued by her and, um, I mean, through our whole relationship, I learned a lot of mm-hmm. stuff. Um, but she, that's a valuable relationship then. Yeah. Also, if you, yeah, if you, yeah. if you walk away, Learning a hundred percent valuable. Yeah, and I learned uh, I learned a ton of amazing things about myself and relationships, mm-hmm. and then I learned some things that I never want to do again. Right. <laughs> which is, right. Right. I mean, that, that's just the reality. That's the reality. Yeah, and I'm and I'm okay with that, and I don't ever feel like things like that are a waste of time right. or anything right. like that. Right. Um, and I feel like it was important that not only I experienced it with her, but also that this kind of happened in our relationship as well. Right. Right. So the the best way I know how to say this is, it felt like to me that because of who she, ah, it's so hard to say. It's like she was the only person that would cause a riff in our relationship. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> She's the only person in the yes. whole world that a woman yes. that could cause a riff in our relationship. Yeah. Um, so it's only, it's only right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I don't really no think, disrespect. No yeah, 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 no, no, disrespect. no disrespect. But but she, yeah, she yeah. she did hold that role. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, no fault of her own. Uh, also, no fault of her own. But that, yeah, that was her role. Yeah, and I, I guess that's really all that needs to be said about mm-hmm. about that part. Um, is that she was the only person, and it there was a moment where God, it really is hard to hard to say no, that. No, no, no. That's, that's the good part. Yeah. So it there was a moment where me and you had a conversation and Mm -hmm. I was actually, I was hanging out with her when this happened. And Mm -hmm. so if I can describe it to the audience, it's like when you're, let's say you're, I'm just going to use like dad or something like says this woman, you, this woman is going to, Cause a huge change, rhythm. change something between <laughs> yeah, us. Yeah, this right. is gonna change something between us. Right. Oh, here we go. Here's a better example. It's like, um, no, actually, no, I'm not gonna use that example. So yeah, it's just gonna cause. There's gonna be a big change. So you have a decision to make. Right. If you choose to pursue this woman, 
it is going to mess up our relationship. Right. And so at this point, you may have known me enough to know what I would do already. I, right. I, I don't know. Absolutely. But I, I am a hopeless romantic dude. Oh, yeah. I love love. And I, my dream has always been to, I want to find love and be successful. <laughs> and it is always seems light possible. work. Yeah. Light, light work. Yeah. yeah. Light work. But that, um, <laughs> so when you, when the person that has been, you were like the, you were my dude for right. like years yeah, and yeah, yeah. you're coming to me and you're, it felt like an ultimatum. Right. And I was like, how can you like, in my head? I don't it was, know. It was hard. Yeah. yeah. I was like, how can I, what am I? It was this, like, I broke. I'm just like, ah. Somebody you trust, somebody you respect, somebody you got a lot of love for, mm-hmm. put you in a pinch. Yeah. With this one statement. Yeah. And mm. it was, I don't know if it's like, um, maybe it's ego. Maybe it's um, just like fear of not knowing what this could be because I felt something so strong. Right. Um, or a part of me thinks it was the fact that I was put in the pinch that maybe I was like, right. maybe this is a sign that I should actually do it mm-hmm. if someone's putting me in a pinch. Mm-hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. and I don't want y'all to think that this was the reason that it happened because I think everything is like a culmination of why there was a riff. Yes. So we're, we're dealing with the, the testing out knowledge, which another conversation we had, which affected me was right around the same time, Mm -hmm. um, we were in the car and you mentioned something about being the leader. Right. Um, and I don't remember the exact words, but mm-hmm. it was something along the lines of you were feeling like I wanted to be the top dog. Right. Um, and I, in my head, I, I wasn't feeling like that. I was like, I don't, I really don't think that's what it is. Right. But maybe, I mean, maybe it was subconsciously, you know? Well, back to you wanting to try your knowledge. It's kind of the I think that's what I saw was yeah. that you were like, I've learned from this and now I want to teach it. I think I have enough to teach it. Mm. I think I got enough to teach it. I might not have it all, mm-hmm. but I have enough to teach it. Um, That's so. And that was more what I was picking up. Yeah. And the condensed version is, you want to be me? You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the, <laughs> the, the like but the, uh, <laughs> you know, putting a little bit more um, uh, meat on those bones. Yeah, yeah. It, it's what I really saw was more like, okay, he want to try it out. Mm-hmm. He want to try it out, and. Um, and and we did a couple times, you know. You mm-hmm. you had some interns that were working for you and mm-hmm. and things of this nature. And um, but part of trying it out is, and this is the part that's important mm-hmm. um, for all the OGs in the world or want to be OGs or mentors or whatever. To try it out, you have to let them try it out. Mm. You know, it's not try it out with my system. It's not try it out that's under right. my tutelage or guidance. Mm-hmm. If you've given the correct guidance. Mm-hmm. And you've given the correct tutelage, and you believe in the person the way you've always believed in them, mm-hmm. right? Then there's zero reason to micromanage them, mm. because the truth is, they will come back for the parts they don't have. Mm. Yeah, that's if true. if you don't if you let them build their own mm-hmm. version, you know. Do you feel like that you? Let me do it my own way, or do you feel like there's like a mixture of the tutelage in it? Well. Ah, the thing is, you filled yourself up with mm. techniques, mm-hmm. and you humbled yourself to to put some of your ideas to the back. Mm. So you earned the right to try it your way. Mm-hmm. And I think it's just timing. Mm. I can't even really say a woman would have made a difference. Mm. You know, it's it like was, it all it was a gas. At the same time. It was a gas. I mean, it could have been gas in the tank, mm-hmm. but. The fire was coming anyway mm-hmm. because you needed to try this stuff out, mm-hmm. you know. So, um, and that <laughs> the thing about it is, all you can ask for is a mentor, mm. or in our case, you know, like family, like bros, mm-hmm. and we got a serious age difference, like probably two years apart from being like daddy age. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But the thing is, I literally gave you, you were one of the few people, if not the only person, that I gave everything I had to. Mm-hmm. So if I didn't have it, or if you didn't get it from me, I didn't have it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and I could live with that. Mm-hmm. You know, I could live with that. That meant more to me than you being here. 
mm-hmm. ultimately. Mm-hmm. You know, um, n- now there were some f- comfort issues that I had to get used to. Mm-hmm. I remember when Ethics came out, I looked in the crowd and you weren't there and I was like, Cole's not at my show. What is, mm-hmm. what, what's the world coming to, I you know? Be because that's show. my boy, like my mm-hmm. boy gonna come for my, when mm-hmm. I get down, regardless, mm-hmm. you know, you know, all that other stuff don't matter. Mm-hmm. And I remember that being um, a new um, chapter I had to get used to, right? Mm-hmm. But you know, you know, that's, those flesh wounds. It does, it's not. It's not. It doesn't penetrate, right? Mm-hmm. But um, mm-hmm. but I think what you're saying is is right and exact. And and at some point, you know, I think it's unfair to. Mm-hmm. to even really weave her in that story mm. without a bigger understanding as to why because that just yeah. it, it demonizes her and it's yeah. not her fault yeah, you know? it really was not her yeah fault. it's not her yeah. fault at all it demonizes her for no reason she just happened to be woven into a story mm-hmm. and maybe I contend that the real story is so unbelievable that I would prefer to re- to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> or at least weave it into a it music video. A oh yeah, it's a nutty, yeah. it's a nutty story. Mm-hmm. So, um, but it's also stories like that that remind you that you are with the right people. Mm. You know, the six, the six degrees of, yeah. of se- separation. You was my kin when you walked in the door. Mm-hmm. The rest of how that played out kind of proves it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. That's um, very interesting. You're very close to me in person, but you also literally have walked in my shoes in some places, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. obviously knew sometimes what to do with mm-hmm. knowledge you learned from me, mm-hmm. and other times you need to try your own version of it out, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, but no, it, it, it all it was a testy time, but but this is the part that that matters for people who do want to know. Yes, it was tense between me and Cole. Mm-hmm. Was there any disrespect? No. Mm-hmm. Why are we here today? We eliminated the disrespect. Do we have feelings about it? Sure. Mm-hmm. Did we have feelings about it? Strong feelings. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Was there disrespect hurled across with the intentions to hurt somebody? No. That's what I wanted to talk about for a second. Is it that was, I mean, outside of things that have been happening the past couple months that was the hardest emotional toll i've ever been through. at that time right? yeah at yeah. that time oh yeah it yeah. um she was hard on me yeah and i had been through something already <laughs> yeah it, it so there was so many things that made it hard and but it it really was like i i was the man that's what i felt like right i was not only that i feel like the man but i was me and you were just like we were just like on top and we're doing all these things we right were, people working for us and people coming to us and looking to us and I was 23 years old <laughs> and I was just like it was it felt like family but it felt like gone in a right. second and I know that it wasn't really it was a lot of things I created in my head right right, um, right, right but right. it really was just so eye-opening to and you were never you never even gave off that vibe but it was just when so many people love you right and then it comes across as I'm being whatever I'm being disrespectful or whatever, right. like, whatever they think right. it is. And they react that way towards me. It, it was just so, it was, it was eye opening in a lot of ways, but it was just emotional. I was heartening. Yeah, I would think. Yeah. yeah. Just, I was distraught for, mm-hmm. for months. Mm-hmm. Really. I didn't, mm-hmm. I hold up in my house and I just was like, I don't, I just did business. Right. Like, that's the only thing I knew how to do. I was like, I don't know what to do. And then, I mean, even speaking to your show, it, one of the things that I love about you and that I'm inspired by, but I'm I'm not as good at, or as maybe it's not, not developed yet. Yeah, you, you were still working on. Yeah, it's right. like a I don't know if it's there's it's a loyalty type thing or a um you just care so much you push so many things aside no matter how uncomfortable it makes you. Right, um, right, and right. that's I had tried to might have been later on but i i know i tried to go to certain things and i just the energy i just felt when i talk about the empath thing it just when i feel negative energy towards me it just kills me Mm -hmm. and i would walk into a place and i would see people looking at me and i don't know what they really thought but i i can you've already told you yeah i've already told myself and it looks like that they're judging me and i'm so uncomfortable for me and it just felt like my whole world ended just like that and um it was so 
yeah so i just i threw that energy into business and right. i threw it into my relationship and we just there was a long period of time where we didn't really say anything to each other right and right just kind of dealt with that in our own ways i guess and it's funny because you see it that way i actually see it like in my mind that loyalty thing you're talking about is because we have etched put like this in life i'm 43 years old right mm -hmm. all right so check game mm -hmm. in life i've come in contact with a lot of people mm -hmm. there's not very many people who i've built things with that are that that have that are written in my history. Mm -hmm. You understand? I don't understand why people, I will never understand why people try to rewrite history. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. one of the things, uh, this the illest thing is, you know, when you diss one of your own partners, mm -hmm. just on a, a surface level, yeah. speaking to the loyalty thing, when you diss one of your partners or somebody that used to be your partner, mm -hmm. you dissing yourself. It's true. Period, mm -hmm. you know? So I never understood how people have this, especially in music, they have some type of love affair with each other, mm -hmm. where they, oh, yo, you the illest, yo, you dope, and all this, then something happens, and they like, yo. Fuck that. It just <laughs> it makes everything that you said before invalid, mm -hmm. and I'm not gonna do that. Mm -hmm. Not over no argument, mm -hmm. we just got finished I mean, blood, sweat, and tears on so yeah, like, we, 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 yeah. I'm gonna chuck four years yeah. for an argument yeah. in year five? Yeah. Nah, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. Cause that's a disservice to me. Mm -hmm. It's a disservice to you. It's a disservice to the things we built. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not gonna do that. Cause I'm not gonna take, there's enough altering of history in the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna alter my own history. Mm -hmm. That's my bro. I don't care who you walk in the room with. I don't care who thinks they know you better. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. That's my, I know him yeah. if, and he's welcome here. Mm -hmm. So everybody else gotta get it together too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because he's welcomed here. And I and I find as I get older that's surprising to people yeah. that I don't care, you know, mm -hmm. or that I'm not gonna sit on that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. But all I can say is I was raised right, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, my homies, um, you know, got on me. Mm -hmm. and love me at the same time, mm -hmm. you know? So all of that ain't come out the house. You know, I yeah. came up with the right homies and they got the right to. Because mm -hmm. when you invest in somebody and when you believe in somebody, you got the right to tell them, hey, fly straight mm -hmm. because I'm here for you. But mm -hmm. I'm not here for you to, you know, be yeah. wavy and wiggly, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and not, not that that was your issue, but yeah. what I'm saying is the same hand that corrects you is the same hand that really loves you. Mm -hmm. Because somebody who wants to, Correct, you want to love you. Mm -hmm. So I'm not about to go down the other way and go, oh man, you know, I don't want him around, mm -hmm. you know. And that goes for anybody, yeah. you know, because if you're a part of my history, I'm thankful for you. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, if you're written in my history, shit, you probably help me. <laughs> That's yeah. the bottom line. So if you, I'm not gonna try to scrub it or act like I didn't learn it. I mean, mm -hmm. you, I, I was laughing the other day thinking about the argument we had out in front of the boom room about uploading direct to YouTube or direct to Facebook, you know? <laughs> and it's funny, cause years later, I uploaded something direct to Facebook and I got more of what I wanted out of it. And I was mm -hmm. thinking, motherfucker Cole, he told me that shit. <laughs> and I was, t I'm like, no, we gotta get it on YouTube. But you know, it's like, mm -hmm. that's where I'm at in life. Like yeah. I, I understand how valuable you were to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't wanna dishonor that. Yeah, You know, that, I don't wanna dishonor that. And that's, for me, it, I can never feel right about dishonoring you as much as I had at that time. I had so much anger and frustration. Mm -hmm. Of course, I wanted to do things or say things, but mm -hmm. it just never, my heart was just like, can't do it. Like, it just doesn't feel right. And I, want, I wanted to touch on one mm -hmm. moment before yeah. I change the subject a little yeah. bit, but there was the most emotional moment was um, because it was like, it was, it was almost like it was like a heartbreak. It was mm -hmm. legit, like it felt. Because not only did the, the the woman thing and all this other stuff happen, mm -hmm. it was a moment where I was like, I think I need to leave. Right. And um, mixed in with all that stuff, mm -hmm. there was just this moment where we had where you were, we were screaming at each other. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. But it was on the phone. Right. And I honestly had never... 
other than like a, a woman or my dad maybe right. getting upset about about something. It was the it was the first real um, outside of like a romantic relationship where I was like, I felt so intense and right. I felt like it really was like a heartbreak. Right. And I had never experienced that before. And I right. I think it's important that people have friendships that close. Um, yes. But they was just, I, I screamed at you and I screamed at you so hard that it was, it was like I was acting in a movie, right. but I wasn't acting. <laughs> it, it was just. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. You're right. It was such a moment and it showed me how much pain I felt. Right. And, um, right. and I felt it from you too. Right. Um, Absolutely. And it just, I don't know. It was that, I think that was the moment where I realized that we needed like a space. We need some space. Yeah, we need a we space. Need space. And I think the biggest thing that, I mean, to a lot of your points that you made, it's like I just needed to stand on my own. I think, yes. I think that that was so, as painful as it was and as hard as it was. It was time. Yeah, it's it time. Was time. Yeah, yeah. I haven't lost anything by y'all standing on your own. I mean, I lost a little bit, but not a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, it's still New SC, it's still a beautiful. Um, thing that I'm proud of, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, it's funny. Bruce was over here the other day. He was playing his new digs. He got a new album coming, mm-hmm. and I was like, yeah. I ain't gonna talk too much about it because I, I know he on his own timeline. But mm-hmm. Heat, yeah, bro. Heat, he's talented. And what's nuts is when he left, because you know the way Bruce rolling, <laughs> 11 p.m. Leave out at one thirty because that's the way he rolled. Mm-hmm. One thirty a.m. Mm-hmm. So I'm vibing with the album. We talking and getting a chance to catch up. We hadn't talked to each other in a while. Yeah. And um, when he left, I was just thinking, I'm honored that he actually wants me to hear it. Mm-hmm. He still wants me to hear it first. Mm-hmm. Like he still wants to go. What you got, OG? Mm-hmm. Talk to me. You know. And it reminds me, I did something right. You know, because Bruce had to leave at some point and stand on his own. Mm -hmm. But in due time, he came back around and was like, bruh, I didn't realize how much I learned from you Mm -hmm. until, you know, I I had to apply it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I realized I knew what to do because I hadn't been, I had been in this position before Mm -hmm. in a, in a, uh, in a bubble. So I didn't have to feel the pain of it, but now feeling the pain of it, okay. I get it. This yeah. is this is serious. So, and there's no more than I had to do. I I still get on the horn and call Spectac, K Live, mm. the guys who gave me a shot. Mm. Still Mookie, still still shout them out because I remember at different times in my career, if you wouldn't even took no time with me, mm-hmm. obviously LJ, you know, if you wouldn't have said, I believe you can do this, it changes so much, yeah. Like, yeah, I might have built a lot after that, but the foundation was you even believed I could do this. So, mm-hmm. you know. With that being said, um, it was time for you to go. You know, boy meets world. You was ready <laughs> to get out there. We had about as much fun as you could have in those four years. I mean, yeah, we honestly yeah. did. Tons we had all the laughs. laughs. We had yeah, all the good times. Mm-hmm. We we pushed each other creatively. Mm-hmm. We made things that we were happy about. I mm-hmm. remember us listening back to Soda and being like, mm, mm-hmm. oh. If feel if feel like you can't manufacture those feelings, Mm-mm. you have to Mm-mm. really work. And, and I couldn't make be that alone with. either. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, man! Yeah. I mean, there's so much into it. It was so much wrapped up. I mean, we thought about it, we debated about it. Mm-hmm. This record, that record. How yeah, should I bought you sound? like thirty records like, initially, <laughs> <laughs> and they're probably crazy sounding. Well, know, but that was all part of our formula. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you come in wide. You know, I chip away at it yeah, and try yeah. to make it into a sculpture. And then once you see it, you're gone. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not making a record for you. Yeah. You bring it in, a big lump of wood. I, mm-hmm. And once the last chop that you can see what it's about to be, it's like um, Will of Fortune. Mm-hmm. The letters start popping up and eventually, oh, oh, I got it now. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I turn a few letters, you're like, all right, cool. I'm back in the driver's seat. Mm-hmm. And that's our formula. Yeah, exactly. You bring it in wide, yeah. I take a little bit off, you mm-hmm. jump right in it, mm-hmm. I fine tune it. And that formula worked for us. We it did. We found out how to make it where, uh, and creatively, we just accepted what the other person was bringing. Yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> we, re- yeah. we really, it was like, some of that stuff I wouldn't have tried with another artist. Because mm-hmm. I would have thought they'd have been like, nah, bro, damn. But you was like, mm. mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll try I'll try it. <laughs> <laughs> One of the biggest moments with that, um, it may not be the biggest, but I just remember it the most, was with No Four Times, actually. 
or I was right. rapping it, and you were like, no, 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 go. Ah, ah, and it was just using my voice in a different way. I wasn't right. really expecting right, right, that. Right, 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 but that was right. really, that was a dope moment. It's like, oh, I can do anything. I can, yeah. like, I can go like, ah, I can, yeah. I can make all these noises. I can noises. make all these noises. Yeah. So, exactly. Yeah. That was No, that was, that was uh, No Four Times was fun because, um, and, and we should tell the world now, that originally was called Not Intimidated. That record. <laughs> Did you even remember that? Barely. So the, it comes the, the, on my shuffle sometimes. <laughs> so it was not intimidating was the record, and wow. no four times <laughs> so was the was part of the verse, mm-hmm. and and uh, wow. that that speaks to our creativity. Yeah, it changed. So I much. was not feeling the not not intimidated hook, mm-hmm. but the thing was we had built so much creative space. I was able to tell you that without mm-hmm. having to be like, no, hey, sounds good, Cole. Sounds good. <laughs> you know, like I could say. Mm-hmm. Because I've already seen you do something great, yeah. So I don't yeah. want you to do something good. Mm-hmm. Now we gotta always aim for, and that's why great. it was a lot of times. So it was creatively frustrating, but it's it's so it helps you so it's satisfying. Much. Later. Yeah, it's like it's working sati- out. It's, yeah, it burns yeah, yeah. now. Yeah. You're like, yo, I can't do it's another like, push up. Uh, but okay. then later on, mm-hmm. you know, when you walk around with your wife beat on and your lady is <laughs> like, oh, uh, you've been working yeah. out. So, you know. <laughs> I do what I do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's exactly that. So but nah, true. nah. You that not, not intimidated record converted into no four X, mm-hmm. and, and I think more than that, what you realized was I can bring a mess. Mm. There's yeah. nothing wrong with shaping up a mess. Yeah, like it's everything just, doesn't have to come out the chamber. Mm-hmm. Amazing. You know, clean amazing. Nah, nah, nah. Bring a mess. I mean, Vulture was like that. that Vulture. Was, yeah, that was a crazy. We changed out so much. So much. Yeah. I spent you know, so much time on that. let it fi- let yourself feel it. Mm-hmm. You know. So nah, nah, nah. But, all around the board, those four years were great years. It was time for you to to, to venture out. Mm-hmm. Um, there were parameters around it, but here's the other thing. Mm-hmm. Here's the here's the kicker. Sometimes you need real heartbreak, because the truth is, mm-hmm. we wouldn't have probably stopped. We did. Yeah, we could. We did. Yeah, so, yeah we did. We did not talk for two months and then been like, mm-hmm. all right, we're gonna get back in the studio. We needed a real break, mm-hmm. you know, because. I had things that was going to come up. I was going to need to deal with. Mm-hmm. You had things that were coming up. You need to deal with. Yeah, definitely. And um, before you ease into the realm of codependence, which people easily do, so right? Yeah. Um, check your relationship. Mm-hmm. See if it can stand a break. Yeah. If it can't stand a break, you're probably codependent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's I mean, yeah. That's if it can't if it can't stand point, a break, actually. you're probably codependent. So mm-hmm. no, I think it was, and I I enjoyed. Uh, us, I I tell you this, I enjoyed us running into each other over the three years. Mm, yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. I I enjoyed it's like seeing each other. Grow yep. It's, oh man, ways, yeah. it's seeing an old friend. Mm-hmm. It's seeing an old, all damn near best friend. Mm-hmm. It's um. It was like that, watching man. your growth. Obviously, me in my forties, I'm growing gray mm-hmm. hair, but you're <laughs> growing in. Character I think you've and strength. A lot, actually, yeah, 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 yeah. it's Probably, interesting. It's in the hair. Yeah. It's the wisdom. You know, you get the gray hair going, and it's like uh, yeah. Master Splinter. You know, yeah. so, but no, it was good. I remember that first record you made. Um, um is that it? Own. Um, yeah. And I remember sitting in the car. I'll never forget this. The record came out, and I was sitting in the car at Whole Foods mm-hmm. when I recognized, and I said, "Let me see what the hell Cole got going on." Mm-hmm. So I played it. And it's funny because I was mad at you at the time. So mm-hmm. I played it so I could be like, she sucks. Dang, it sucks. <laughs> right? But there was a part of me that also didn't want it to yeah, because course, yeah, I'm yeah. invested in this artist. Mm-hmm. So, like, you can't suck. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's 50 50. It's like, it's, I want it to be better than everybody else's, but not better than what I would have done. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. so, so I played it. I and I'm getting into it, and I listened to it about three, four times because mm-hmm. I was supposed to walk into Tzatziki's and I couldn't because yeah. I was just like, yeah. And I finally found something I would have changed. Mm-hmm. But other than that, mm-hmm. I loved the record. When I saw you, I was like, yeah, I remember? Yo, it let me know that our that creatively our work wasn't going anywhere either. Yeah. So yeah. I felt very connected to everything you put out because I knew you were using some of the techniques you had learned yeah, to sure. craft, and so mm-hmm. it made me feel like. I was still present, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, and um, and 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 that I think, you know, eases the pain. Mm-hmm. You know, totally. it would have been different if you just came out whole rock and roll and been like, I never liked to rap anyway. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I don't really care yeah. about hip hop. You know, 
Got you, fat yeah. rat. <laughs> no. Got you. Please. But nah, you was like, you what you took, you took it forward. So is there anything you want to end this with? Do you have anything coming out in any any facet of your life? You know, let's, uh, we didn't talk a lot of music today. We didn't. But let's not soil this great interview. We're talking about it. You know? okay. We're both okay. musicians, uh-huh. and this is an excellent platform. And, and I want to say I'm, I've thoroughly enjoyed what you've been doing I i've seen the podcast that. grow mm-hmm. and uh this was another one of those things that you were like i think i want to do a podcast and i was like cold <laughs> cool it man cool it you're gonna be an actor you're gonna do a pod- cool it rap songs yeah. you know but wow. uh no you really worked on this and got it good and popping and i'm and I'm, I'm i'm excited to be here and be on on this uh, on this outlet which i, I don't that. think people actually take a lot of time to make it good mm-hmm. and i think you're making it good so I don't even want to soil this with new music. Mm-hmm. Um, what I will say is, if you haven't had a chance to pick up the, the latest Cole Connor album, ah, um, that, you man. gotta you gotta tap in because OG and Coley Cole got back together again, hey. and we did what we like to do, what we did best, you know. So another great collabo, mm-hmm. um, which we're starting to rack them up, you know, for yeah. the money, uh, soda. Mm-hmm. Um, Heirloom. Heirloom, quicksand. Quicksand. Yeah. Oh, man. So we starting to build them up. Mm-hmm. And um, and I enjoyed that. And I think that was the great um, or the really good re-entry point for us. So after all the 2017 we talked about and then the earliest of 2014, I think the best part about it all is um, in 2020, mm-hmm. that circle closed back up. Yep. And we may have another break. Mm-hmm. You know, you but know. you know that it can come back around, yeah, exactly. and, and you've learned that. You know, yeah. and it took time to learn that, mm-hmm. and, and me as well. So, mm-hmm. um, no, this was good, and I and I hope that it is. Um, it's funny. You really don't have a direction with your conversation, <laughs> which makes it very authentic. Yeah, that's whatever's what talked about. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Like, I, this actually, is I try not good, to think about it at all. No, no, no. Yeah. This is a good interview because it's mm-hmm. not like. Oh, so you started back in nineteen ninety, whatever. You know, you know who taught me to have a good interview. You know, what I'm about to say who? You. Oh, did I? Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was a time. It was very quickly. I was interviewing for a Kickstarter we did, and there was a moment I messed up. I just I said something in a big circle, and he was like, "What the fuck are you <laughs> saying right now? We have it's like nine o'clock at night, and you're not even saying anything." <laughs> And I had to, I just I watched that interview I feel like so many times and I was like I really didn't say anything <laughs> and from that moment I was like I have to get better at this. no I remember no yeah. it's good <laughs> it's really good um, and it's a great platform and and I, I and I love that. to see it grow so what we'll do is I want to be the first one to get a part two since I since I love that since yeah. I came later in the programming mm-hmm. I want to be the first one to do a part two let's do it we'll do a part two at some point and we'll talk more more music let's how about it. that I'm right. down that's a bet. All right, y'all. We out of here. Peace. Fantastic. That's going to be dope. Yeah. That hopefully was, that's unique. That's definitely unique. I, 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 hopefully that's real like, unique. I mean, nobody. Oh, man.